What up? It's your boy T-Bear here in reaction. Today is, is Wrestling Wednesday. So I'm about to do a video from Parts of Unknown. Now this, now it's about my baby faces, but this is what I like to call the bizarre world. Wrestling Universal Wrestling. Mainly the Universal Wrestling. Or the company. Hello, we're side phone when, when fans turn them baby faces. <laughs> you kind of know like seeing shit like that. Especially myself. Because it puts a dilemma in the rest of fandom and everything. It gets you confused on by what's going on with the wrestling fandom as well, too. And it makes you want to question me being a wrestling fan sometimes. Trust me, plenty of times I have questions about wrestling fandom over stuff like this as well, too. Because fans, I don't, it's, and then other thing is, make, make myself, me, especially myself, think that makes you want to just get rid of the alignment system altogether because fans not going along with it as they supposed to they're barely doing as much now but when they do stuff like this it's just like what's the point of having an alignment system in the fans it's not going it's gonna pick who you like you know what i'm saying and it puts a real dilemma with other fans including myself and anything because you feel like you're looking for the good guy but there are other fans are booing them it's like you feel a little out of place. But other than that, this is 11 precise moments when wrestling fans turns on baby faces. So, without further ado, let's check it out. Of course, you have seen that as one because he's one of them. And, you know, you know, he's healed now. He's doing his face day. Roman got that kind of situation as well, too. And anything. That's why this is a serious, bizarre world moment now with his heel run and all that. That's another reason why I said they need to get rid of the wrestling, uh, the, the line assistant because they're not, fans not following it. But anyway, let's get it. You know, they say that baby faces are harder to book than heels. Why? I hate that saying. It's just, to me, it's lazy to me. It's lazy and a cop-off to me. I mean, you, it's just try hard. It's not that hard. It's really not that hard. You know what I'm saying? Do what you need to do, but stop. And then it always leads to my other one. I hate Bill turns me in the answer. I hate like, uh, it's like it's like you're pretty much saying you ain't get you get hell like by being a bad person. You get liked by being a bad person. Yeah, you be you get like to you gotta be disliked to get liked, which is kind of like not a good message to give to me. To me, in my opinion. Well, it is much easier in decades past when wrestling fans were just happy to cheer the goodies and boo the. Sorry, I, I let me go back to that because I hate, I hate when he says harder book a face. I hate hearing that. You know they say that baby faces are harder to book than heels. While it is much easier in decades past when wrestling fans exactly. were just happy to cheer. Like, the why, yeah, it was. I was like, why is it hard now? It was so easy back then. It was Steve. Like I said, I just watched the awesome main turn with Steve Austin. The had to air. You, they did it so good. What's, what's so different now? The goodies and boo the baddies. The late 90s saw a shift and cool heels took over the business. And with the rise of social media post 2011 and to an extent forum posting in the mid 2000s, shout out to the Smart Marks forum, which was my home ground for bitching about wrestling in 2005. Fans are now more than happy to just let whatever company know that we think their babyface creative is utter shite. And in some of those cases, it ruined babyface runs. I'm Luke Owen, hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are 11 precise moments that wrestling fans turned on baby faces number 11 roman reigns ww oh man i oh like you know I like him now because uh, that tribe the tribal queef hill hill character but when he's face i was a fan of this man you know i rolled the faces and i felt bad i was actually at this russell main this royal rumble i felt so bad that he was getting booed as well even the rock could help him i felt so bad for this man it was like, what can, what is, what is the deal with the folks that disliking them? I never understood that. Same with Cena, man. We Royal Rumble 2015. It's pretty hard to believe nowadays in an era when he can get away with his San Martino-esque championship run and an entrance that lasts longer than most prime ministers' careers, but people really didn't like Roman Reigns for a while. Most of the animosity towards Reigns can be chalked up to his superhero level booking and a fundamental misunderstanding of what makes a person likable. The 2015 Royal Rumble is where things really started to turn south for the big tribal dog chief. He was popular in 2014. He won the Slammy for Superstar of the Year on a fan vote. We all wanted right. him to win the 2014 race. That's what. That's the other thing. Kid. He, and that's the other thing that kills me about that. Before that, especially when he, when he was when he was 
the, even during the, the hill days of the chill, he was like the favorite one out of all three of them. And when they turned face, he was the one that got the most pop out of all three of them as well, too. What the hell happened and what changed? Humble, but oh, what a difference a year makes. Shortly exactly. after his legendary championship victory at the previous year's WrestleMania, Daniel Bryan was forced to vacate the title due to injury. After eight months of speculation as to whether or not he would return to the ring, That's Bryan announced in January 2015 that he was cleared to return just in time for the Rumble. Learning from their mistake the previous year, more on that later, WWE put Bryan in the match only to have him eliminated early. Uh, the crowd okay. immediately... That's the other reason. That's possibly the other reason too because they... Because they got damn right early too. That's why the reason why I felt bad for Roman because he it wasn't it wasn't on him. This this, this, this they they did damn Bryan there. He had to take the heat for it. Lee turned on the mm. remaining participants and directed most of their ire towards eventual winner Roman Reigns. Not even a run in from The Rock, who raised Reigns' mm -hmm. arm in victory, could save this crowd, mm. who continued booing as a confused Rock so presumably sad. wondered how and why his cousin had managed to fumble the family legacy so and badly. And people was getting booed that was supposed to be face the time was a new day and that's led to their hill turn but i'm glad they they went back came back to face gradually came back to faces and when the top faces world and nxt tag champions number 10 Liv morgan wwe summerslam yeah, 2022 this another one that I was like what the fuck man it was it was like at this point this really i was like they need to get rid of lima system because they was doing her dirty man it was like at one point they was she was they was hyping her up to be the one that that did the win the million back and everything. And then the next thing I don't know, it was just mm, they. I it's probably because what how the whole thing with the the Rana thing, but still, man. <clears throat> I always say a wrestling fan it gets very very confusing these days for real. Two wrestling fans are a fickle bunch. Please let our favorites win, Papa. They say, begging mm -hmm. balls in hand, we'll mm -hmm. be ever so appreciative yep. and never ask for anything yep. again. Okay, the promotion replies, yep. but you'd better not immediately turn on them the second they win gold and go right back to complaining all the time. Perish their thoughts. Yeah, what's up? Why are, why are fans like that? That's the other thing. Why are fans like that? Like, it's just nerve-wracking to me they say grubby little fingers crossed behind their treacherous little backs yeah. wouldn't even dream of it governor so after years of asking for Liv morgan to be given a chance with the gold wwe pulled the trigger at money in the bank 2022 when morgan won the show's titular sure ladder match I before cashing in a briefcase on smackdown women's champion ronda rousey to begin her first reign with the big one a series of uninspiring matches and some so-so character work so fans like part of, is part of ronda fought too and begin to grow matches. restless of Liv morgan almost immediately until later that month at SummerSlam, she faced Ronda Rousey in a rematch for the title. Rousey dominated for the majority of the match before Morgan scored a lucky pin by rolling Rousey onto her back during an armbar. Worse than that, they did the old tap out spot while getting the pin finished, meaning in everyone's eyes except the referees, Liv had just lost. It was a bit of catch-22 booking from Triple H as he struggled to deal with the narrative remnants of the Vince era by trying to keep Rousey strong while not immediately cutting Morgan's first run short. But the crowd was already long gone, enthusiastically booing Morgan during an Oh shucks, I tried my best promo on the following week's yeah, Smackdown. Right. Number 9, Sammy Guevara and Tay yeah. Mello, AEW. This one here. I, I saw the box playing time, now I got room to talk about this. You had so, they had so many times to make it a double turn between him and, Scor and Scorpio Sky. They kept fucking it up like crazy. They keep it keep faking out us, faking us out over it and anything. I get that top the top uh team top team basically what the fuck is his name um fat piece of shit whatever his name is that guy's name is uh I've got his name is uh that's right where the hell he been at uh it's supposed to be hateful or anything but Scorpio Sky is lovable man and yeah yeah it could that could have been an ultimate double turn you could have had Scorpio Sky leave top team whatever and you might come back as a face because he had to deal with his injury but they fucked that up plenty of time the fans was already getting tired of of, of Sammy read the fucking room turn this man make turn him heel make Scorpio Sky face but they didn't they kept teasing us things gonna happen and they kept fucking it up so many times like eventually but at least eventually Sammy and Tay Tay are heels now we can we can freely hate them now but this was a fucking this whole situation with them two and then between him and Scorpio Sky was nerve-wracking my goodness
AEW Dynamite, March 23rd, 2022. You'd think wrestling promoters would have learned by now. Wrestling fans are not interested in romance. Well, unless yeah. you go by WWE's YouTube numbers, but those people are weird. We don't need love. We have stats and memorabilia and trivia about One Night Stand 2005. Did you know that JBL shot punch the blue me oh, yeah. for real Z's? Fans were already predisposed to not react well to Sammy. And plus, with this, it's bad enough how how messy it was it went in the first place. That's the other thing. You put a messy situation. This is this is once again the second the third time it's like the first time they did this too. Like they put a messy situation into wrestling. First one was the edge mat the match match lead the triangle. The second was Kurt Ang the Kurt Angle, J Jeff Jarrett, Karen Jarrett triangle. And then you put this mess, because the reason why it's a mess. This man proposed to his then girl, his previous girlfriend, on stage at the show. Big, big difference than anything. And then going around mess, messing around with Mello, tight, tight Mello, and then that was a big mess, man. Guevara and Tay Conte's relationship, as it came not long after Guevara very this? publicly proposed to his previous girlfriend at an AEW Dynamite taping just a few months earlier. Honestly, that's nobody's business but theirs, but you try telling wrestling fans to stay out of wrestlers' personal lives. Sammy and Tay came out on the March 23rd edition of AEW Dynamite to deliver a promo about Guevara's recent loss of the TNT title to Scorpio Sky. This promoted Sky's manager Dan Lambert to come Dan out Lambert. and brag about the win, kissing the belt as he did. And as he kissed it, Guevara and oh, Conte yeah. revealed that they had slept together while wearing the that belt. I thought was, Conti I ain't gonna lie, I did that time thought it was funny. I did talk thought it was funny because at the time Sam was the face, but this is but it was slowly turned but after that it was slowly turned to annoying that uh do a double turn, please, but they didn't capitalize it at all. It's backed up with photographic evidence on Twitter. It was an obnoxious bit of promo work from two people that were already on thin ice to begin with and started Tay and Sammy right. on the path to fully fledged healdom. Number eight, Tetsuya Naito Power Struggle 2013. Okay, now this is this is um is New Japan or all Japan, so I won't know too much about this, so I'm definitely all ears on this one. In 2013, Tetsuya Naito was being pushed as New Japan's next big thing. He just won the G1 climax and was on his way to main eventing Wrestle That's Kingdom, which was the biggest show of the year against Kazuchika Kurakada, one of its biggest stars. However, fan reaction to Naito was underwhelming to say the least, and there were worries that putting him in the top spot of the flagship event would undermine the show. At that year's Power Struggle pay-per-view, in which Naito defended his never open Not championship more. and Wrestle Kingdom contract against Masato Tanaka, the crowd were completely heatless for what should have been a major bout. But when Naito emerged after the main event to stand face to face with Okada, you could legitimately hear a pin drop in the room. And that is not hyperbolic. It was deadly silent. The total lack of interest and clear push against Naito caused New Japan to worry and rethink the direction of Naito. If I was for, if I was for New Japan ever like that, I would definitely feel bad for this situation with what I'm hearing though. Oh my god. You, yeah, the, the rest of the fandoms. You gotta, you gotta love the rest of the fandom these days character. This led to New Japan holding a fan vote for whether it would go ahead with the planned main event of Naito vs Takada or switch it with the planned semi-main event of Shinsuke Nakamura vs Hiroshi Tanahashi. When the results were announced, Naito and Okada had gotten only half of the votes Nakamura and Tanahashi had gotten, thus losing their main event spot. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but silence can kill a push dead. Number 7, Ronda Rousey yep. WWE Survivor Series 2018. Yep. This is our first example of fans turning on- This now- it's part her fault because she's like, just she. I'm I was happy when she came to WWE, but she just not cutting it right now. She's not cutting it now either, to be honest. She's just not cutting it, man. I this one I can I can get, understand why she just can't cut it. She think because like I say I understand she got the moves or anything, but it's more than just moves. She get she's her personality is not the best. You know what I'm saying it's not. And we got and we got a full on. Example when she did the voice for Sonya Blade on the Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm. I'm like. Yeah, I'm still. What the fuck about that? They could have did way so much better with that on a wrestler due to their support of another wrestler who wasn't even there that day. In 2018, Becky Lynch was on a hot streak, winning crowd support despite WWE's constant attempts to turn her heel. You all hate yeah. me, Becky would say in her promo. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, see, this is why I always say dating the list of fans. They did not want her to heal. They, this, is off, this is nothing. I, I, this is off the subject of this. If they don't want this person to be heel, don't turn heel. Just why the hell you would make her the hill and Charlotte Flair, the, they are tired of already the face. You fucked up by that. 
but they they learned but as they they redeemed herself by making her face again right at right instantly keep not keep her the hill at, at long i'm glad they changed their mind on that they did the same thing with and same with moxley we don't want moxley as a hell he's we love this man too much most terrestrial praise from the crowd who clearly loved her. You were never there for me, she'd argue. As I like, really like that, they like you. Why was you trying that? The crowd wasn't buying that. Everyone chanted her name. At that year's Survivor Series, Lynch was supposed to face Ronda Rousey in a champion mm -hmm. versus champion match, but was but she broke accidentally face. given yeah. a legit concussion from Nia Jax just a few days before. Charlotte Flair replaced Lynch, and to be fair, the two had a pretty fantastic little match. However, it ended in disqualification as Flair hit Rousey with a kendo stick and proceeded to administer a brutal and very heelish post-match beatdown. Despite this, the fans cheered Flair on, presumably seeing Charlotte as somehow the instrument of Lynch's will, taking down. That's another, that's another fucked up moment, right? But okay, now I remember that that was kind of fucked up right there. That's, that's that, and that's why, that's why Ronda felt the way she did, because that was fucked up. Like, fans, mm, you got to question the fans sometime. Down the coronated top women's star to make place for the ascendancy of the man. Number six, The Rock, WWE WrestleMania X8, and also SummerSlam 2002. Yeah. A rare instance of a match where the crowd. Now, I didn't, here's the reason for that. There's reasons for that. This one, because they were so loved with Hulk, Hulk and being back at WF, unfortunately fell victim on that side right there. But the SummerSlam, I guess, because they knew he was going to leave in Hollywood. Mm. Now turning on one of the performers actually elevated it. WrestleMania X8 saw Rock and Hogan, two icons, go toe-to-toe -to -toe in an intergenerational dream match that we never actually thought we might get to see. What WWE hadn't accounted on, though, was that this WWF crowd was super happy to see Hulk Hogan back in a WWF ring, which he'd been missing from since the early 90s. So no matter how many trucks he ran the Rock over with, this crowd cheered Hogan like the conquering babyface and booed what? the Rock what? 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 mercilessly, what? prompting the company to turn Hogan into immediately babyface the following night on Raw. And it wouldn't be the only time in 2002 yeah. that the crowd turned on the Dwayne one. A SummerSlam 2002 saw them cheer heel Brock Lesnar as he dissembled the Rock. Only because like they knew Rock was leaving for Hollywood. That's, that's, this fans are very messed up. Fans can be messed up, especially live fans. Live fans can be very messed up, man. An errant deer carcass in the show's main event. I'd say it was a bad year for The Rock, but 2002 was also the year of the Scorpion King, launching Johnson's Hollywood career and putting him on the path to becoming one of the most successful film stars of all time. You know what they say, a year in the professional life of Dwayne The Rock Johnson is like pizza. Even when it's bad, it's still pretty good. <laughs> Number five, Lita, WWE Raw, April 18th, 2005. Lita versus Trish Stratus is one of the most iconic yep. women's feuds in wrestling history and is part of the real reason women's wrestling enjoys the this level of prestige it does today. However, in 2005, the feud almost ended up being derailed thanks to pretty personal circumstances that wrestling fans decided was their business. Lita dated Matt Hardy uh, for six years. See what I told you? That, that, that shit right there. That's that shit between 99 and 2005. In February of that year, it came out that Lita had actually been cheating on Hardy with Edge, a situation that would soon be that's worked into shit. a wrestling angle and one that's of the worst bullshit. booked oh, wrestling oh. returns of all time for Matt Hardy, but that's another list for another day. On the April 18th episode of Raw, Trish Stratus, the heel in the feud, came out to deliver a promo on the face Lita. Lita came out on crutches, but no amount of sympathetic props Damn. will stop the crowd of early 2000s wrestling fans from hurling sexist abuse. So that's exactly what they did. Trish tried her best to keep the segment on track by drawing back some of the heat on herself, but the fans would not forgive Lita. WWE, in one of their trademark classy moves, would bring the Edge Lita relationship to television just a few weeks later, turning yep. Lita heel in the process. Number four, Cody Rhodes, AEW Revolution. And I'm glad you left the I'm glad you left the WWE for bad because they they was do they was brutal to him. My God, it was brutal. They was so brutal to him. My goodness, especially his magic is O O O whatever name O Gojo whatever name is you know Jojo whatever the name is though like we thought we may have a double turn there because even this guy that the head of Jabba Tear was saying that because they because of what he's promoting what Jo Jojo do was good or anything and comparing to Cody Rhodes yeah they was just I don't know what was going on with fans of Cody Rhodes man it was nerve wracking for sure man for real.
Revolution 2021. Adrenaline in my soul. Turns out no one likes Cody Rhodes. Believe it or not, people didn't turn on Cody because of how annoying that meme is when people get the syllable count wrong like I just did there. No, it's because he spent the final year of his AEW run being booked like the love child of Lex Luger and John Cena, and even then, they'd probably tell him to tone the America stuff down. In the lead up to Revolution 2021, Rhodes had just come off the back of a weird gender reveal yeah. segment and a self-indulgent celebrity feud with Shaquille O'Neal, so people were already starting to get a little tired of him. While Rose didn't receive the level of backlash he would for later stunts like that promo where he sold racism, the face of the oh, Revolution yeah. ladder match was when things started to turn south for the former Stardust. Rhodes did that spot where a wrestler gets hurt and then hobbles to the back before re-emerging to bravely soldier on, and the crowd were not having any of it. He took a Canadian destroyer on the ladder, and they still pelted Rhodes with boos like he just announced he was defecting to WWE. Number 3, <laughs> Bailey, WWE Extreme Again, did not. Mm. I think this is what the Kindle Stick one. I know. Yeah, they did. This was now. This was pretty much their fucked up booking right here. Cause, cause they like let's say they, they do have a good job as a heel right now. But hi, the ultimate baby face of NXT, who was the perfect baby face, and you fucked that up. Wow. Rules 2017. Before she wanted to speak to everybody's manager, <laughs> baby. <laughs> I told you she's a Karen now. I thought she turned to a Karen. <laughs> well, I'll call her Karen either since she's late, but <laughs> of wrestling's most earnest baby Great. faces, entering each match to an AI-generated Carly J. Repson song and dressing like Lisa Frank threw up on her, and it was f***ing awesome. And everyone loved Bailey in NXT because she was the f***ing best. I loved her so much. While Bailey's sincerity did get her over with NXT fans, the main roster crowd did not like the fact that she was a character that appealed to children and weird men like me in their thirties. This came to a head at Extreme Rules 20. 2017 when the hugger faced Alexa Bliss in a kendo stick on a pole match. During the match, Bailey got the better of Bliss, standing over her with a kendo stick ready to strike. Unfortunately, Bailey's instinct to be nice overrode her desire to do the main thing that wrestlers are supposed to do, you know, win matches, and she choked, leaving Bliss an opening. Yeah, that was bad, Big, and they could have let her hit. If she would have hit her, we still love it. They fucked that up with that. To recover and ultimately win. The booking made Bailey look weak and naive to the point that she wasn't even sympathetic anymore, and the fans sure let her know That's that. Fun. Number two, WWE Hell in a Cell oh, 2019. Yeah. I mean, you all knew this one was coming, right? People like to point out that Hell in a Cell 2019 Another was the moment the Fiend book, gimmick yeah. died, and that is fair enough, but people forget that there were two. It was fucked up booking up. They fucked up two booking. His face run and heel in general, and the uh, Fiends in general, because we, because he had time, we didn't know his heel face, whatever, but they fucked that up. They fucked up the booking. That, both of them came out bad in that book and then eventually he let the helmet happen the force to hill and then fiend just not being without having so much bad luck glad he's coming back hopefully they do better this time Casualties in that main event's lock box of hard knocks, shocks, and bollocks, Seth Rollins' reputation didn't come out of the cell unscathed. It's not exactly Rollins' fault, but his role in the match seemed like it was to make it as boring as possible. First he hit a curb stomp, and then another, then another, and then another. Then another and another, stomping and stomping, and the feed kicked out of every single pinfall at one for a total of, I sh you not, 11 curb stomps. It doesn't matter how many good something is, if you have 11 of them in a row, you're going to get irritable. Apart from maybe Quality Street, because I've just eaten 11 of them while writing this script and I haven't thrown up <laughs> yet. Rollins then used a chair, a ladder, a toolbox, a butcher, a baker, and a candlestick maker <laughs> to first attack, then literally bury the fiend under the world's most spiteful construction project. Seth Rollins' assault was so monotonous that even eventually the referee got bored and called for a DQ, forever tarnishing the legacy of the cell as a feud ended mega gimmick. Rollins' booking had been awful in the build-up to the match itself, but this was the icing on the sh cake. One of the most enduring images of the night is a dejected-looking Rollins walking to the back, knowing what just happened was an absolute disaster, past a sign that read, Seth Rollins is not cool. And number one, joint number one, oh, Batista and Rey Mysterio, man. WWE Royal Rumble 2014. Ah, the 2014 Royal Rumble. An event so poorly booked it made the crown turn on not one, not seven, but two fan favorites in the space of about 10 minutes. All because they had the audacity to not be Daniel Bryan, when we wanted both of them to be Daniel Bryan. The crowd also booed John Cena and Randy Orson earlier in the night because they also weren't Daniel Bryan. But remember, Road Dogg has told us this was the plan all along. No, it wasn't, Road Dogg, you carny mother 
And no, it wasn't. And you know it wasn't. And if you're not down with that, I've got two words for you. <laughs> you're full of shits, <laughs> mate. Fans were eager to see Brian in the Rumble. If not as its oh, eventual yeah, winner, but at least as someone who put in a gutsy yep. performance to help advance his reputation as the lovable underdog. However, Rey Mysterio emerged as the 30th entrant, thus eliminating any chance of Brian participating in the match. And the mood in the arena turned yeah. sour as people started booing, ironically, the lovable masked underdog Rey Mysterio. Things just got worse from there as fans continued to boo the remaining participants. They did briefly pause to cheer Reigns over obvious winner Batista, but resumed jeering as the inevitable happened and Batista won the match, cementing his place in the main events of the show of shows. WWE were then forced to change their planned main event of Batista winning the title from former Evolution stablemate Randy Orton in the main event of WrestleMania 30 to Brian picking up the belt instead. Unless of course you're Road Dog and tell us it was the plan all along, even though Batista and Brian have said that it wasn't, you're full of sh Road dog. <laughs> so that's our list, and what a wonderful list it was. Please click the videos on screen now to check out other videos like this. Subscribe and enable notifications. All right, cool. So, yeah. Part of it was for, part, part of it was part of, of the the ultimate the um bizarre world of wrestling fandom. Other one was bad book, fucked up booking, and, and, and other ones with as well as the Sammy thing, not reading the fucking crowd. Not read the fucking room. Sometimes you gotta read the rooms, man. Sometimes, you, and it's not hard to book a face. You just read, follow the crowd. See, follow the crowd. Let the face have some kind of edge to them. It's okay. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Like, it's not that hard to do it. Like, stop making them feel like they have to go heal to have some show of edge. They don't have to turn heel to show of edge. That whole add to error and the Rufus Aggression era show that you don't have to. Go, go to the other side to show a little edge to him. They can show the edge as a good guy, still. Regardless, know what I'm saying? Damn. I mean, a good person, a good guy's person is a lot of said cussed too. So a, a good rest, a good guy wrestler is a lot to snap, be somebody else too with, with Kendall say go hardcore, man, for real. It's not hard to book a face. Think, just think out the box. Stop sticking in, the, stop staying within the box, within the limit. Think out the box, you good. Other than that, interesting video. If you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T-Bird signing off. One love.